Well, hello everyone and welcome to RV Talk Radio. Here we talk about RV travel, RV living, and RV lifestyles. So grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, relax, and let's talk about RVs. Hey, hi, this is Rob, and welcome to the show, RV Talk Radio. Today, we're going to talk about just the living, the RV lifestyle, and reporting to you some interesting things that happened this week. Stay tuned. Well, like I always say every week, seems like it's been another crazy week. But this week was kind of interesting (laughs) because we got to meet one of our fans. And I'm really hoping I don't mess up her name. Uh, I'll just say their first names, which was uh, Malia and Doug. And it was really fun to meet them. They contacted us, especially after a couple of shows ago, we did a a, uh, show about the dark side of RVing, which is meant to be kind of funny at the same time but um you know i can't be always be peaches and cream when it comes to being an rver but uh and and the mission of that was to give people awareness and to realize that things can happen can happen with rving as well as owning a house it's if you take a lot of the reasons of things that went wrong in the that particular show and then apply them to your house it probably come out pretty close to being the same there's the dark side of owning a house but anyway so we're contacted by these two and uh and asked if we come out because after they heard that show we kind of shook them up and they just moved into their rv and uh we love to meet and talk to the people that listen to our show and that's why we keep telling you contact us contact us well they did and so we actually had uh to go to check out some RVs and stuff that we're doing that particular weekend, which also brought us uh, near where they're staying. So they actually invited us to come to their RV and and, um, get at least our opinion. We're not experts. We don't think we are um, of how well they were set up because they just moved into their RV to live in full time. So we did. We we uh, showed up at their place, and uh, it's like, first of all, they like, treated us like we're celebrities. It was like, we're not. We're just normal people like you. The only difference is we talk too much. So anyway, so what a great day it was with them. And I got to admit, they had a cute little um, Northwood Snow River 25-foot LLS, is what, I think is what they called it. And it's actually only 24 feet, big slide, but the layout on that thing was <laughs> was fantastic. Couldn't believe it. And they put a nice little cof- round coffee table in the, in the back, which I didn't realize lifted up and made out to be in the table too. So they could utilize the living area, kitchen area, the way they wanted at different times it was just amazing layout it was really really good so it was really fun <clears throat> i think uh the only thing i was worried about with them was is the fact they only had one air conditioner and we're in arizona and uh um it's gonna get hot and uh i i hope my three air conditioners can keep up so anyway um beautiful beautiful setup and it was such a pleasure to meet those people and and they inspired us to talk about other things which we'll be talking about in the show but the point is is somebody reached out to say hello we really appreciate that that and they treated us really well and they're off to a great start they basically went from a living large to an apartment reducing it down and they were just like three weeks into it and they're scared to death but they shouldn't be um the, the big thing is, if you don't like it, it's easy to go back. That's the bad part. So uh, they set themselves up really well, and I think they set themselves up well for success. They didn't overdo it, and their first RV gives them the opportunity to really dis- figure out what they 
do and don't like and what they want really want in their next RV. Uh, that's why buying your first one, you shouldn't go all out until you actually lived in one. And then you can kind of weed out the little things you need so you get just the right RV next time. Anyway, but they shouldn't be in a hurry because they have a great setup. All right, so moving on to another thing we wanted to talk about was, you know, we hinted that we were looking at RVs. And we really got down to getting close. We started weeding them out, and we actually kind of started leaning towards a bounder. And we're talking new. And uh, uh, like Sherry normally does and like we always try to do, when we get that close, I mean, when we're actually close, we actually zeroed it in, it's always best to say, all right, we're not doing anything from this point on. We need 24 hours to think this through. So we gave ourselves our 24 hours, thought it through, <clears throat> excuse me, and uh, we're going to still wait. <laughs> it's like, you know what? We are financially the best shape we've ever been, really reduced debt, almost, at, well, paid off debt. We're really in good shape. And it's like, why do we want to mess that up? And I'm just going to have to cross my fingers. My truck is as tough as I think it is. So... For those of you who know trucks, I have a Ford F-350 2002 diesel with the 7.3 engine. Body is perfect, and so my worry is I'm getting up to 192,000 miles, still running like a champ. It's like a, I just love my truck, and I'm just worried, do I need to worry? <clears throat> Am I going to hurt this truck if I keep pulling this big rig? And I don't want to buy another truck. If I get close to having to buy another truck, that's for sure I want to change over to a motorhome. But uh, I'm going to cross my fingers that, you know, people say, hey, it's not unusual to go 300,000 miles on these diesels. And, you know, the, the main thing is everything around it falls apart, the alternator, the batteries, all that. And so uh, I'm going to stick with it. I My truck's been good to me for this many years. Let's see if it can be good to me a little longer. So, uh uh, since we're in such good shape and everything's paid off, I think we're just going to hold hold the line here and just try it out this way. So, um, But yeah, we're kind of leaning towards the Bounder, Fleetwood Bounder 35K, which had the king-size bed in it, and gas in that diesel. So um, it's, right now is a really good time to get a 2016 because they're bringing this 2017s in. So the prices are looking real good. But I think we're holding the line. We're going to just kind of stick with what we got. So, <laughs> and be grateful. And so here's my next piece of news. While we were having all this fun, what I really haven't told you a whole lot about was, you know, if you've been watching our videos, you watch Sherry and I, uh, we had a blowout, blew a tire, uh, just about, 40 or 50 miles outside of Las Vegas. And uh, it did damage the RV. It um, messed up the paneling and the, I don't know if they call it uh, a skirt or fairing that was in the outside. It was made of fiberglass. It was just demolished. And it looked terrible. It broke our hearts. And so um, when we got here at our RV park, we're actually kind of parked right by a guy that does RV repair. And I showed it to him. He goes, oh, gosh, I could do that. Just get me the parts. I was like, really? <laughs> I don't have to go to the shop and stuff? So we started the process. I contacted Keystone. Uh, finally kind of got to the right uh, distributor, actually. And actually had the parts shipped. And it, it was about with shipping. And remember, this stuff is crated, so it has to be protected. So all in all, my parts in the shipping was 350 bucks. So um, I'm also guessing that if I used my insurance, my deductible is like $500. So I was kind of looking like, if I don't go too much over $500, I'm right in the ballpark. So I did that, got it in um, about a week later, notified the guy. And while we were out there meeting these really nice folks over in Arizona uh, and looking at RVs, he um, was given the thumbs up to go ahead and work on it. So we're going like crazy through the day, looking at RVs, meeting up with the um, with uh, the, the folks that wanted us to meet them, and <laughs> got back, and it was done. It w 
the whole thing. Like, so we walked around and it was beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And there's a video coming out about it. And we also did a 360 video that shows it. So if you watch the 360 first, you get to see it sooner. But it just feels so good to have our RV back to 100%. So woohoo, after uh, we did spend another $300 for labor and some extra parts and stuff, just you know, uh, sealants and stuff. So uh, the whole thing costs us about $650, which is pretty much what I expected. And we're happy. We got our RV back. It's 100%. looks beautiful. It's just that peace of mind that our truck, we know our RV is in good shape. They have that ugly little dent on the side because of that blowout. Like I said, it looked like somebody threw a hand grenade at the side of our RV. It's fixed. All, all gone. And uh, just, I don't know, makes us feel a lot better. So, you know, that also kind of like, all right, baby, we've kind of put new tires on you. We got you all fixed up again. And it's like, I don't know if I want to trade her in. We're getting this thing kind of tweaked in the way we like it. So, <laughs> I think we're going to hold on to her for a while. But, yep, looks really good. Tire um, Fender's fixed. And make sure you keep an eye out for the videos for that so you can see, um, see how well it came out. So, there. Well, you know, it seems to be our responsibility to make sure that we keep you confused. <laughs> so here's some more confusion for you, which actually I think is better. So um, you got to remember, we got to we look at everything in a, probably a different way than some folks do. Is we're definitely been expanding, expanding, and really good things are happening. So, well, some people will try to judge us by like how many followers you got in your YouTube. What they don't see is what's really happening in the radio show, you know, radio side of things, which has been expanding really uh, fast. And we appreciate it. Thank you, listeners. And so uh, then, <coughs> as you heard a few weeks ago, we thought, wouldn't it be cool to have a radio station that was outdoor oriented? I didn't want to keep it just RVs because there's so much more beyond just the RV. Once you walk outside the door of the RV, what are you doing? outdoor activities so you know we heard us create outdoor travel radio which was awesome it's really cool and we finally got it kind of tweaked in we wanted to create a station it isn't all just talk radio it's a radio station you can listen to everywhere you go it's got great great music and i can guarantee it's music that you know the words to a lot of them and uh we know that our listeners typically are 40 and above. Now, there's exceptions to that. So I can guarantee you that the music we play, and we do have our music license, and uh, we have awesome, awesome music on there. And so we also take like this show and uh, add those in, and we put some other little things just for fun, just the fillers, and, and uh, we call them five, ten-minute shows. But basically, it's designed to... Oh, and the other thing was really cool. We, I always wanted to... I don't want, I grew up with listening to old time stories on the radio and, uh, <laughs> I'm not that old, but I like them. And so I always wanted to find a place where you can go listen to old time radio shows like Gunsmoke and stuff. So we also created a special seven o'clock at Pacific time, which is nine o'clock Eastern time on outdoor travel radio, uh, an hour where you can listen to two really good old time radio shows. One was Gunsmoke, and another one's called um, Sherlock Holmes. And we might add another one uh, for a lunchtime kind of uh, storytelling thing. So when you're having lunch, hopefully we can set our time perfectly on that so you can listen to us. So you remember, the way that works is as long as you get the internet, you can get our show. So if you go to OutdoorTravelRadio.com, right at, right at the top corner you see, press here, but you also see some little tabs below it. and you Or if you just want to listen to it through your cell phone, you'll see a little link below that button that says uh, mobile app. And you can listen to us anywhere you go. You just set your phone down, hit that that app and, and play it like a radio and you can do it when you're driving. You can take it fishing. You can take it on your camping trips. <coughs> We're there. And it's just good music. And uh, so it's a mixture of classical rock 
and uh, and some pop, and also easy listening. And and in the middle of the night, we kind of tone it down to easy listening, um, but still good music. The kind of music that you recognize, the kind of music that you can't help but kind of sing to. Sorry, but uh, it's just good music. And uh, as time goes on, we'll kind of listen to your guys' feedback. We'll tweak it as we go, but. Um, it's it's an awesome show, and and it's more designed to not just be a talk radio. Then otherwise, we just kind of niche ourselves in. It's broad. It's something that you can listen to while you're driving. So next time you're on a trip, get us all tweaked in on your phone and play us. And you'll be surprised that your cell phone will play us everywhere. And it's not like you have to wait for. To get into a certain region. We are worldwide. You can listen to outdoor travel radio everywhere. And that's what's so cool about it. And so, uh, anyway, give it a try. But here's the next thing I wanted to tell you about. We changed our YouTube channel from Rob Scribner, which is just the main thing on there, which said RV Travel Buddy, to Outdoor Travel Channel. And so the reason we did that is because we're kind of spreading out a little bit. And uh, uh, so as soon as we kind of changed the name, we kind of, like, well, better change the logo a little bit on that. And then we thought we better create a, a site to match with it. So there is actually a outdoortravelchannel.com. And uh, it will be more broad of, of being able to talk about hunting, fishing, uh, camping, um, different kinds of travel, uh, travel hobos, they call them, <laughs> things like that. Um, that's what it's all about. And so if you go to the YouTube channel, you'll see now it says it's called <laughs> Outdoor Travel Channel. And uh, uh, yes, we're seeking trademark on that, so so there. Anyway, um, and then we also got the complimentary website to match with it. We're not sure what we're going to do with it yet, but we kind of got it started. And uh, left it at that. But um, it's kind of exciting because now the whole world is at our <laughs> doorstep. We can do all kinds of cool things. Does not change RV Talk Radio. Does not change RV Travel Buddy. Does not change RV, RV Travel Quest. It's all encompassed underneath OutdoorTravelChannel.com. And uh, the response has been great. Uh, of course, we're overwhelmed with a getting all this set up and, and, and the way we want it, but it's, <laughs> it's pretty cool. So, uh, of course we got more Facebooks, more Twitters to take care of. And it's like, why do we keep doing this to ourselves? But, uh, anyway, it's been fun. We're growing like crazy channels doing great. We're really happy. We're having so much fun meeting our listeners and, uh, and, uh, people are sending us comments. We're having a hard time keeping up. If we haven't replied to one of your comments, sorry, just it's been so much going on and between all the new shows and, and a radio station is a lot more work than you think it says oh yeah i just set up a radio station well you gotta get your licenses and then you gotta program everything and and tweak it and then come up with more shows and and uh so uh it could use more help because <laughs> i could use more help ah but uh uh I'm on, the universe will show me which way to go. And hopefully the universe will introduce me to some people like to help participate. Uh, we're also looking for people who want to do some shows. Uh, if you've got something that's outdoor-oriented or it's still RV-oriented, um, and you'd like to create a show, actually have a weekly show or something, hey, talk to us. We'd love to have you. Um, we're looking for content. And uh, right now we're in... Uh, bartering kind of mode you know uh, <laughs> so this is the time to do it because i can guarantee it's going to change so anyway fun stuff lots of things going on had so kind of go through it we got a chance to meet one of our listeners face to face and uh, i want to be careful i say it's malia and doug i want to thank you very much for having us over uh got to look at the rvs still kind of him and han got the new rv travel channel going Busy, busy, busy. So, anyway, let's move on to a new subject. Well, this week 
was a a first for me in Shuri. It was something I've never had the opportunity to ever, ever do. And it was amazing. Totally, totally amazing. It was one of those check off the bucket list kind of things that happened. It was here. It was in it. Thanks to my daughter and, and her husband is they invited us to dinner. And uh, so <laughs> we uh, went to, uh, we all agreed on a certain place. Um, what the heck was that called? Um, BJ Brewery. Anyway, so dinner, dinner was pretty darn good. And it wasn't, I mean, it wasn't a perfect dinner, but it wasn't the dinner that was so awesome. It was what was next door. Can you guess what it was? <laughs> it was a full-size Krispy Kreme store. Yes. Oh, my goodness. So, we go over there, and yes, they're in full production of making donuts over there. And there's like this assembly line thing going, and it's like, and it smelled like heaven. Oh, my God. And it's like, all right. So not only, I mean, there's the old traditional just glazed over donut, but they got all kinds of variations, including um, apple fritters. And it was, it was heaven. It was. <laughs> I'm telling you. So it's like watching them make those was really cool. And they would get in front of it and it's like, all right, we're going to get a dozen of these. Here goes their diet. So much for the Fitbits. Anyway, but um, <laughs> we loaded up. <laughs> two of those, two of those, two of those, two of those, and two of those. It just, uh Anyway, so, yes, I, I've never, I've had a Krispy Kreme before, and usually they're like little distributors that get them delivered to them. But I never went to a store that actually was, you could buy them warm. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Yummy? Oh, my gosh. I don't think they make a bad donut. So, yep. We did it. Finally, a bucket list checked checked off on the bucket list. I have made it to a Krispy Kreme store that was actually one that made the donuts right there. It was awesome. I highly recommend you need to put that on your bucket list. So I, now that I got that off my chest, the other I heard two pieces of information. And I want to dig into this a little farther. But I've heard two things now. You know, during the time that we were looking for RVs, here's one of the statistics I heard. That one person was trying to tell me that over 80% of the motor homes that are sold in the United States are gas. I don't know if that's true or not. I'd like to find out and verify that. 80% of all motor homes sold in the U.S. are actually gas, not diesel. The second thing I heard is that there's a surplus of fifth wheels out there for trade-in due to the North or South Dakota area, since they had a decline in the, in, um, oil industry, sorry, <laughs> senior moment <laughs> that, you know, a lot of people moved over there to use fifth wheels and trailers to live over there while they worked in the oil fields and, and doing the fracking. And now that the oil prices are down, there's been big layoffs and anyway, and people trading in their RVs and selling their fifth wheels now there's actually a surplus of those out there and this could be just a sales ploy to give you a bad trade-in allowance <laughs> but that might is that a true statement too so i'm going to start digging into the, both of those statements so once again 80 percent of all motorhomes sold are gas and two that there's a surplus of trailers and and rv trade-ins due to the fact that there's been layoffs and, and especially like the oil fields where thousands of people have been laid off and so they don't need those anymore. I don't know if that's true or false, but sure makes you wonder. Which now this brings me to another fact, and this one's kind of sad. And I I just, I don't I think my age is starting to show. There's no doubt. So I was in contact with somebody. I just put it that way. And uh, we had some edgy things going on, let's say. And so Sherry and I were just like, all right, let's just, you know, let's get dialogue going, make sure that everything, you know, we're cool. So started off texting. And it's like, hi, 
How's it going? Checking in. Haven't heard from you in a while. And this dialogue went on and on. And, and <laughs> you got to remember I'm old school. So back when I was in school, typing was one of those things that, you, you know, uh, let's put it this way. There wasn't data entry was still what they called punch cards. Okay. And the biggest thing in the earth right now was electric typewriters and guys didn't take typing back then. It just, <laughs> you know, of course I made sure my kids did, but anyway, things were different. I'm not that old, but things have happened quick in the world. So I'm trying to keep up with the typing. I'd type a few sentences and then this person would respond with like a novel. And I typed with a couple of short little things in a novel. And they kept reading between the lines of everything I was writing. Only, And I was only doing one or two sentences because my little fat thumbs can't keep up. And so I, I get, I'm trying to, like, like I'm a telephone kind of person. You know? It's like, so I, I'm old fashioned. When I'm having a discussion or there's an issue, it should be on the phone or being face to face. So you kind of get the tone of people and realize where they're coming from. Because, boy, when you're texting, and I came from an aerospace company that I retired from, and I worked with the engineers and all that stuff, and they're really famous that they'll stay right behind that email and say, no, get your butt off, out from behind that desk and talk to me one-on-one -on -one so we can really you know, figure out what's going on here. Instead of spending a half hour typing out your email, you could have been over here for a second, talk to me, and we could have this done in 10 minutes. So anyway, <clears throat> so... This week, it's just convinced me that I'm just getting old because <laughs> I was they. I even said it in my dialogue that I can't type very good and, and my thumbs are too fat and, and and this is ridiculous. I'm going to call you, and they actually told me that they would prefer to dialogue and have deep conversations texting. And it's like, oh my. God. God, are you kidding me? It's like, now, I, I'm going to blame this on me. I guess it's me. <laughs> okay. So nobody out there is to blame. But is that really what the world's changed to? That you can't have a dialogue of deep conversations unless this in text? Is that true? <laughs> is, or is old school, uh, is it? actually considered old school to have dialogue face to face and I, you know and Skype I would say is still face to face so techno I'm not against technology obviously but I want to see their eyes I want to hear their tone of the voice I can measure a person pretty good I mean not all the time just by meeting them and talking to them and listening to their voice and how they interact with you so I guess I'm going to say I'm glad I'm old-fashioned because I still prefer hearing a person over the phone or talking to them one-on-one. -on -one. And, and yes, I can handle the Skype thing. But I truly think true communication still requires human interaction. So if I'm wrong about that, please let me know. I And I guess I'm too old to change, but I can't really change that feeling. But to ha if you're getting into deep dialogue with people over texting, I would suggest you shut it down, stop right there, pick up the phone and talk to that person. Because I can guarantee you that that conversation will go muck. Because someone will read something you typed wrong and interpret it wrong. And this makes things more like a soap opera. And Sherry and I aren't very good at soap operas. <laughs> so, as you can tell, it's probably, I'd probably have a lot more followings if I had, <laughs> if I was the more of a soap opera or a gossipy or whatever. I tend to like to just talk to you one on one. Just like when you guys are, uh, we love to hear from you. It was so nice, just like last week, meeting people, real people face to face. And they had a chance to realize we're human. We're not some special folks or anything like that. We're just like them. We just talk more than others. And we just want to talk to others electronically. And that's the only difference. So anyway, lesson learned for me, I guess, is I'm old-fashioned. Conversation should be with a real person, a real voice, and preferably 
face to face. So the next part of the show might be a little deep <coughs> in a good way. And so this is something I, I discovered in the last few weeks. So you have to realize since we're l launching more things into the outdoor travel channel, we now go out and, and monitor more um, things beyond RVing, like fishing, hunting, and things like that. Now, you also, I want to remind you that is Sherry and I have always been, uh, we actually are fishermen and hunters. So just give you an example. All of my kids know how to fly fish. All of my kids know how to use a float tube and, or what we used to call back then, belly boats. <laughs> and, uh, um, we, you know, and uh, we actually hunted as a family. Um, success rate was always the best, <laughs> but we sure had a good time. Anyway, so we're uh, salmon fishermen. Um, we've had boats for years, and that's why we like all this stuff. And and so, as we we're start, and I I owe I. I'm blaming all this on the winds, by the way, from Gone with the Winds, because they started letting me see the other world that I gave up. And and I've noticed, actually, I gave up a lot of things. And you, know, and you may not also know that I also used to own a set of kite stores back in the early 90s. I used to own cutting-edge kites and had four stores out there, and we used to have a mail order just before Internet. And uh, we were on the cutting-edge kite team. We actually traveled all over the Northwest competing, uh, as cutting edge kites um, and cutting edge kite team, and it was a blast. And so we used to do all that kind of stuff. And it's like, and we still carry our kites with us today. We still go kite flying a lot, Sherry and I. And there was four of us, and we uh, still keep in touch with the people on our kite team. And uh, back in '92, <laughs> it's, and if you typed in RV uh, cutting edge kite team original cutting edge kite team, because it was actually a second one after they bought our stores. Anyway, so. <clears throat> long story short, is we're discovering things that are kind of unusual. And I, well, I w it wasn't unusual. It, it made me feel better. Is so you know I started watching some fishing and some bass fishing folks in it. In these young, uh, I don't want to say kids, young adults are going out in their boats and they're putting GoPros in their chest. And and using drones a lot to show the lakes and stuff above them, and are doing some really awesome videos. And it's like, yay! Our kids still know how to get their hands dirty. <laughs> That's what. And I, uh, so it was refreshing to see that there is families out there still hunting. It was refreshing to see that mother uh, fathers were taking their daughters hunting. It was refreshing to see young adults out there really tearing it up, catching fish, and doing the, the right thing is catch and release and getting all excited when they get a really uh, big bass or something like that. And and it's just been so refreshing because I think I was starting to think that our young adults were getting kind of soft. And so it was been kind of nice to see that uh, families are still doing that. People know where their meat comes from. Uh, I know that a lot of folks that don't go out there really look down on that stuff, but I can guarantee you if there was a disaster and something went wrong, the heroes that you would worship after that would be someone that knows how to build a fire, catch a fish, or go hunting. Um, a prepper would be the top of your list of being the greatest person in the world. So, be careful how you judge because um, roles could change. <laughs> I always say, I always use a comparison of going to the zoo and you see this big old grizzly bear in one side of the cage and you're on the outside and you're sitting there though, oh, he's fat and he looks fuzzy and you make fun of him and all that stuff. But, you know, if you took that bear and you took yourself and you moved out to the forest, same two people, suddenly things would look a lot different and uh, you'd be quite humbled. <laughs> so... <laughs> Anyway, I guarantee you one thing, that bear might get even get even with you. So anyway, uh, really good things are going to start happening with this outdoor travel channel stuff, I think. As it's, um, and you'll see a lot more. We're able to incorporate the sailing 
in the boat stuff, boating, more too. So uh, we can definitely support anything that the winds are doing. There's some other couples that have got some uh, sailing Miss Lone Star has been quite the uh, story lately. Um, they're a couple that live on a boat too, and they've had uh, having some difficulties <laughs> anyway. Uh, but they're really nice people. So anyway, uh, I just thought I'd bring that up. And it's refreshing to see that some of our young adults out there still know what's hap really going on out there. So cool. The other thing I needed to bring up, and, and I'm quite aware of this issue, is when we do interviews, uh, like last week's show, we had uh, Less Junk, More Journey folks, and really nice couple, and I'm so grateful that they did an interview with us. But we're having trouble, and we always seem to have this trouble, uh, getting uh, a clear, a really, you know, the sound is really hard uh, when you use a telephone. And you have to realize is, remember, this is the RV industry and these folks, the biggest struggle out there is always internet and cell phones and things like that. So we actually tried something new with them and actually ran them through a patch cord into our mixer. And uh, it was still really hard to bring their voices up. And we're still trying to tweak that in. But you got to remember that they're probably sitting in their RV with a cell phone in their hand on speakerphone. And then some people are shy and stuff. And really, we'd love to say, put that phone in your face when we're interviewing you. Well, they tend to just sit back and they're a little shy, maybe a, a timid or whatever, a, a smidgen. So they're kind of staying away from their phones and it's hard to hear them. So our voices come so overbearing over to people on the phone. And we're trying to find a way to tweak that in better. Or Because if I put my foot down and say, okay, you can only be interviewed if I say, let's Skype or we have to do a one-on-one -on -one or something like that, then it's harder to get the interview. So we have to be, and our listeners, you have to listen, also be patient and understanding that these are real people out in the field. And so um, we don't get to talk to them one-on-one. -on -one. Otherwise, we'd take a special recorder and sit at the table, and we'd do the interview that way and be crystal clear. But these are phone calls done over cell phones and you got signal issues and and then you got more than one couple and they're using the speaker phone and the quality of the audio um, starts dropping and so we understand that and we see that and we stared just have to hope that you guys want to hear the interview uh, enough to overlook that stuff that we're reaching out to these people doing the best we can with the equipment that we have and, and understanding that we need to make sure that we're uh, uh, being understanding to their conditions, too. So, <laughs> anyway, so uh, we're not going to stop doing the interviews. We are going to shorten them a little bit like that one. And because um, we used to actually have the interviews do the almost the whole show. And uh, we just found that I think uh, people like them to be a little shorter. So we'll get more to the point and uh, and. Uh, uh, urge people to go to those people's channels into their Facebooks and, and link up with them so you can see their stories. So anyway, and I do urge that we are a group here that we're not so egotistical, you might say, to say we don't want you to go to see other people. We actually are just the opposite. We find them, then we want to send you off to them, and hopefully you'll be a follower for them for a long time. So it's uh, uh, <laughs> just how we are. Anyway, but we do appreciate when you do follow us, too. So make sure you subscribe to our videos and all that stuff. We appreciate it. Which brings me to saying, guys, once again, go back to RV Talk Radio. Contact us. Tell us what you're thinking. Tell us the good, bad, and the ugly. And um, we ask you to be professional and tactful. But we also want to hear about the good things we're doing and um, what you do like. And so sometimes we can't tell that we take something out. And we realized that you guys really liked it. So we don't know. So tell us what you like and what we have been doing right. And um, also let us know some of the things you like us to bring in. I'm not trying to be like that other podcast. Or I'm not trying to be like that other radio station. If I do that, then what's the point of doing this? We need to be original. So we tend to be more human. We're not being like, I'm not reading stuff to you saying... Did you know that statistically speaking, blah, 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 does blah, blah, blah. And you should join 
you know, all these clubs and memberships and all that stuff. It's, that's not us. It's not going to be us. We're just kind of like real people out here. And that's 90% of the people out here are just, they're not members of anything. They're not even making videos. They're not even blogging. It's only 5 or 10% of us that are doing this. So I want to represent that 90%. And so I hope that's what we're doing when you listen to RV Talk Radio and watch all of our shows. So, <laughs> but I might be way off. I don't know. So please make sure you talk to us and tell us how you're feeling and, and let us know uh, things you like us to talk about. And like I said, tell us what we're doing right. So that's my <laughs> request from you if you could. Thanks. Well, now that summer's coming here, and if you're in Arizona, it's here. <laughs> but uh, uh, some of the things we're doing, and we want to remind you guys to probably do the same thing, is is as the temperatures come up, and of course, Sherry and I got abruptly introduced to it from go coming from the Northwest to this, is, uh, you know, of course, we're always dealing with water up in the Washington area, but now we're dealing with heat. So... I highly recommend that you keep like, um, well, it's a silicone spray that we use, but you can also use like baby baby powder and stuff to continuously, I mean, almost, you know, at least once or twice a month, treat the, the seals on your slides, the little rubber things, uh, with silicone spray. And some people use baby powder and stuff to protect them. And what you're doing is this uh, kind of, the sun is just brutal on this stuff. And so Sherry and I got to deal with this all summer long is uh, protecting this RV. And not from rain this time now. It's from heat and sunshine. So I would highly recommend if you can to start the routine of at least once or twice a month, go out and treat your seals on your slides. Uh, if you know that you're going to be traveling again or the rains are coming, uh, this is a great time to start working on your slides and making sure that they're sealed well at the top, taped up well, decor, whatever you need to get those really nice and waterproof. And yet at the same time that they don't have any problems when the slides go back in. Uh, also make sure that you're treating your slide uh, rails that actually pull your slide in and out with... Uh, uh, a dry lubricant, which means it's a kind you spray on and it goes on and dries quickly, isn't goopy. So when you are rolling, the dust is kicking up. It's not sticking to the grease. So you want to use a dry lubricant. And uh, things like your hitches, and especially on a fifth wheel, you get your big hitch back there. Make sure that that's uh, lubricated. Um, they recommend, this is what people have told us, we use a... Uh, uh, a lithium, a white lithium uh, uh, grease or lubricant on that. And they say that's the best for that kind of uh, stuff. And I use that on our steps. And uh, any moving part that, like your sway bars and stuff like that, is a good place to kind of put a little t uh, touch of that stuff. And uh, it sprays on kind of white, so it's kind of pretty. Not very pretty. So <laughs> anyway. But um, the other thing is here is um, we'll have to wash up our RV again once we're kind of done with these things that we're doing to it and um, have them wax it again and then put a probably, they don't say you don't really have to do it, but put a UV protectant on the roof. Just um, anything you can do to kind of take the stress off the roof a little bit because the sunshine is just brutal. So anyways, this is the time it's spring season, spring clean, time to clean the carpets and Time to check all your equipment, protect it with all this nice weather. And because Arizona is not the only place that gets really warm this time, um, well, as summer comes. And so, uh, and then there's these places where it get really warm temperatures, and next day they got a tornado and torrential rains. So, uh, really having your RV totally um, maintained all the time is really, really important. And, uh, before the the fall and the uh, winter time comes, where in our case more rain and stuff like that, um, to, uh, that 
knowing that you've done all the things to, uh, to make sure that rain doesn't get in when that time comes will prevent molding and issues of warping and damaging your your floors and things like that so wow this is the time to do her um, and we get the whole summer to kind of work on all these things so uh, don't relax now <laughs> and and this whether you're living in your rv now or just doing extended stays maintaining all these things uh protecting your tires even treating your tires with something to protect them from the sunshine uh, you know all putting covers on them is the best but if you don't have those at least armor all them stuff and try to protect that rubber from rotting from the sunshine and uh keep everything lubricated uh this is the time to do it so that was kind of my rv tip for this week is do that maintenance keep up on everything go buy go shopping go to your ace hardware get some of the stuff walmart's got a lot of this stuff and then eventually you'll probably end up at camping world <laughs> so anyway take care of that rv My next subject is probably a little odd, <laughs> but it's about feelings um, and it pertains to RVing. And so here's, I'm going to say this stuff out loud, but I know this is what we've been thinking. So a lot of us watch a lot of different shows out there. We watch a lot of these young folks. Some are gallivanting all over the United States. And we're talking maybe some of them are just young adults and stuff and, uh, you think maybe they should be working, <laughs> doing regular jobs. Some are tracing off to Alaska. Some are living in vans. <clears throat> All kinds of scenarios. Some just buy a sailboat. <clears throat> and so, <clears throat> sorry. <laughs> so, uh, we tend to love to watch them, but they, at the same time, we kind of love to hate them. And I, I'm, I'm, and I, let's put this in perspective. <clears throat> so we sit there and go, well, yeah, you know, but, yeah, but. And so it's probably a mixture of is what kind of mess are they going to get into this time? And I got to admit, let's, let's be truthful here, it's probably a lot of jealousy. And so what? why do we feel this way? And that's, that's the question here is when we're watching them, we love, we're fascinated, we're glad they're doing that, they're giving us great shows. At the same time, we're going, grr, uh, and, uh, well, I'll even bring up the word, I'm sorry, nomadic fanatic. We go, are you kidding me? The guy needs a job. At the same time, I got to watch him. At the same time, we're jealous as all get out. So here's the discussion is... And Sherry and I have the same problem. You keep hearing us talk about it. And we're kind of like, Ugh, we're 55. We have lots of money. We don't have to, you know, we have plenty of money to, I mean, not rich or nothing, but we paid our dues. And here we are at 55 and we're stuck because we can't, don't want to pay for Obamacare. <laughs> Pretty much. We're torn. So it's like, all right. Do I need to take a chance? What are we going to do? You know, you get one chance at this life. There's one chance. One. It's not like you get a repeat. <laughs> right? Am I right? So, you hear our motto, and I'm not even sure if Sherry and I are living on it. What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? And, and Sherry and I are doing the same. What are we waiting for? We're waiting for... Something to change in health insurance? Probably not going to happen real soon. Do uh, you got places you want to go see? Um, are you caught up in the peer pressure of this is what you're supposed to do to provide for your family? Uh, are you afraid of you've been brought up that you are to provide for your family, your kids? And you're supposed to do it in a certain way because that's how our Parents taught us, more so probably my generation than the younger. So I just, even when I'm sitting here, I'm just cringing, thinking, what are you waiting for? Why are we so upset when we watch these people? I mean, well, we're not upset. It's, it's, we're jealous. And it's because they jumped that barrier. 
And and if you guys watch my paradigm chimes or listen to it, they've done a paradigm shift. And they've successfully done it. Now, I can guarantee you those people are probably using credit cards to survive. They probably have debt they don't tell you about. They're making sacrifices you don't see of working out of their RVs and stuff. There's Some of them are probably even dealing with sometimes loneliness. But they're happy. They're doing what they want to do. And they're going against society as we define it. You and I, the ones that are watching it. And we're kind of like bad-mouthing them all the time. It's like, oh, they're too young to be doing that. They should be home at home making babies. Or they should uh, get a real job. They should quit get galley vanting and hardly making ends meet. Living on the side of a road. Uh, boondocking. Stealth camping. All that stuff. And we were, um, and, or like just incredible as all of us would kind of like love him but hate him <laughs> why we're jealous or the fact is they've made a paradigm shift and they realized that there's only one shot at this life one just one and <laughs> when you get closer to our age 55 and up, you start thinking about all the things you've done in your life and you're so grateful you made some of the ch- sacrifices. Things went amok it, a couple of times in our life, Sherry and I's life. And if they hadn't of, certain things wouldn't have happened. I have no regrets for the gambles I made in my life. And I've made a few. I've had businesses. I've had failures. I've had things happen. I have stories to tell. And as it gets harder and harder to do some of the things that I used to do back then, I look back at those memories and I smile. They make me feel good. And that that's what I'm noticing as I'm getting older is I keep talking about this uh, this egg timer type of thing where the grains of salt salt are going through a one minute timer each grain that goes through is a memory something in your life history and as you get older the more you have to look at those grains and realize those are all are those all good memories and I've noticed that when I stuck my neck out when we gambled and when, when we failed those memories make me smile or cringe, but they sh- fulfill my thoughts. They fulfill my spirituality. They are the things that make life important. The th- times that I was living the routine, nine to five, predictable and stuff, they kind of like are fizzy, hazy. They're not st- They don't stand out. I have to really pull those memories forward to remember, oh, yeah, I used to go to work in the morning, do my thing, come back, go to work in the morning, do my thing, come back, go to a couple school concerts, blah, 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 blah. And I have to kind of pull those back and almost try, they almost fade away from memories. But do I remember when I opened the kite store? Oh, yeah. (laughs) Or when I launched a radio show? Oh, yeah. Or traveled the first time and um or went through financial difficulty in 2008 boy those those memories come back and then all those things that forced us to do something and and walk a different direction change our paradigms as thank goodness those things happen to us so let me get to the point why are we feeling this way maybe because we haven't taken action Why haven't we? So I'm going to fall right on back to our uh, (laughs) little jingle that we have for RV Travel Buddy in this show. And I need to apply it to me and Sherry too, and you should apply it to yourself. If you're listening to the shows, maybe you're jealous of me and Sherry. Maybe you're jealous uh, or you kind of like, yeah, but... or you're just getting retired and you keep putting it off. Yeah, but 
All those guys make me hang. They're just goofing off all the time and running around with cameras. Why do you feel that way? <laughs> Why do I feel that way? And I think it's because we're jealous. So my question to you is, you know it's coming. Here it comes. What are you waiting for? I'm Rob Scribner. This is RV Talk Radio. Thank you for listening. Please contact us and say hello. And have a great day, and we'll see you next Monday. Bye now. Bye now.